Hey, what's up guys, how's it going? In today's video, you're going to learn how to set up a full stack application, or I should say a stack application, and deploy that to Vercel and Render. Now, first of all, this video is not about me teaching you Mernstack, MongoDB Express, React, and Node.js. This video is just all about teaching you how to set up a Mernstack application properly and deploy that to online. We're going to build a simple uh, to-do application. This looks terrible actually, but this doesn't matter. Actually, I'm not going to even bother writing the code. I'm just going to copy paste the code and explain it to you. I mean, just give you the overview of what this code is doing because the code doesn't really matter here. My goal is just to teach you how to set things up. And this is a Mern stack setup guide. However, if you want to use similar kind of stack or if you want to use Fastify instead of Express or something else, then you can still follow this guide. And after setting up the project, we're going to deploy our application to Render and Vercel. We're going to deploy our Node.js application to Render. Render is getting very popular. It's a great alternative of Heroku. You might know that Heroku will not give you any free tier, which is kind of sad. So Render is a great alternative for that. Render gives you free tier and also the similar features that Heroku gives you. So that's why we are choosing Render. And after we deploy our Node.js application to Render, we're going to deploy our React application to Vercel. And by React, I meant Next.js. I'm going to use Next.js for this setup guide. However, if you want to use something else like Create React App, you can still follow the guide. Alright, so I have talked enough, but before we get started, please consider like this video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me a lot. So without further ado, let's get started. I've already written a blog post about it on my website. You will find all of the commands and the necessary code for this setup guide. I'll put the link on the description. All right, guys, so let's just first open up a new terminal and let's create a new directory, mkdir, mern setup. Now, mkdir stands for make directory in order to create a directory. And let's just cd into the folder. Now we need to create two more directory. So mkdir, client and server client is for front end and server is for the back end now we are using a mono repo a mono repo simply means containing multiple application inside a single repository so you can think of this client and server as two separate application which are going to be inside a single repository okay so first we're going to set up our back end then we're going to set up the front end so let's cd into server and now we need to initialize package.json and install packages. So I'm just going to grab the commands from my blog. So you can just use these commands to initialize and install dependencies. But if you are lazy like me, you can just grab this single command which will do everything for you. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it here. So let's run the command. Alright, so it has created a package.json. Now it is installing the dependencies. And I'm gonna explain all of the packages once they are installed. Alright, guys, so all the packages are now installed. So let's explore the package.json. So I'm just gonna open the project on my editor. Let's see the package.json. You can see we have a bunch of packages installed. So let's see what are they. So we have installed the course module for handling the course error, then .env package for using environment variables. Then we have Express, which is the Node.js framework we are using. Then we have Mongoose for MongoDB. Mongoose is an ODM, object document model. In simple words, it will allow you to interact with MongoDB with object oriented way. And also it will give you much more feature than vanilla MongoDB SDK. So these are the dependencies. Let's see the dev dependencies. You can see we have installed some Babel packages. What is Babel? Babel is a compiler which will compile down our next generation JavaScript code into older version of JavaScript code so that older Node.js versions can understand the code. 
So we have installed Babel CLI, which is the command line package, then Babel core, Babel node, and Babel preset ENV, which is just a combination of a bunch of plugins. Babel works with plugins, and preset ENV is just a combination of plugins. Then we have another plugin, Babel plugin module resolver. This will be used for using absolute import, and I will talk about absolute import in a minute. Then we have a package called concurrently. This package will be used to run two dev server within a single command or I should say single terminal. And then we have nodemon. Nodemon will always restart our server whenever we will change our files. Okay, so these are the dev dependencies. Now let's set up Babel. So to set up Babel, you need to create a file at the root of your project. And the file name will be .babelrc. .rc files are kind of like JSON. I'm just going to grab the configuration from my blog. I will just copy it and paste it here. So we have added the preset that we have installed. Then also we have set up the module resolver plugin. And this is for using absolute import. So let me just show you the difference. So this is the difference between relative import and absolute import. In relative import, you use this dot dot notations to go one directory back. So you always import files relative to your current file. But this way of importing can be messy, especially when you have a larger project. So that's why we have absolute import. In absolute import, you specify a specific path as a root and you always import files relative to that path. So as you can see from the image, we are importing the same user, but within two import styles. And you can see absolute import looks much better, much more readable than the relative import. Okay, so that's what absolute import is. So basically we have specified the root and the root will be source directory. And I haven't created a source directory yet. So let's just create one. Let's create a directory source. And let's create a file index.js, which will be our entry file. So now let's just grab the code for index file. Let's scroll down. Okay, so here is the code. So let's just copy and let's just paste here. And also we need to create a model for mongoose. So let's create another directory models. Inside the models, I'm going to create a file to do.js and let's just grab this code. Actually, let me just zoom it for you. And let's just paste here. So basically, we have created a schema and from the schema, we have created a to do model and we have exported that. And let's go to index.js and also we have imported the to do model and the import path is absolute not relative so let's see what this code are actually doing so we have imported all of the necessary thing from the libraries that we have installed this code will just connect our application with mongodb but we haven't set up the mongodb yet which we will do in a moment then we have initialized our application our express application then added the course uh, middleware and these are some routes that we are going to need this is just a simple dummy route for testing and we have added a slash add to do route for creating a to do then we have a route for deleting a to do and finally we have a route for getting all the to do's and then we are just listening to a specific port okay so this is the actual source code we will need one other thing, when you are using absolute import and you are not using TypeScript, you won't get uh, any kind of intelligence. So you can see that it doesn't give me any information about to do. To get intelligence with absolute import, if you are using normal JavaScript, you need to create another file, jsconfig.json. And let's just grab the configuration. Uh, here this one so let's copy so again we have set up a base URL which will be the source directory now if we go to index.js now it gives us much more information about to do okay so now that we have our source code ready uh, let's just go to package.json 
to create the scripts so we already have a scripts i'm gonna delete this and i'm gonna create the scripts from my blog um i'm just gonna copy this so we have a dev script for running the dev server nodemon will run the dev server instead of vanilla node because we want nodemon to restart our dev server but before nodemon restart our server we want to execute babel node basically it will just compile down our javascript code then we have a build script which will just build our source code for production into a disk directory then we have a start script which will run the compiled code using node not nodemon this will be used for production then we have a both dev script this will actually run our both dev server our backend dev server and the client dev server so we are using concurrently for that we are running npm run dev which will just trigger this script then we are executing another script which will just go to our client directory and run that dev server okay and now we need to set up mongodb now we're gonna host mongodb on mongodb atlas uh, just go to cloud.mongodb.com and then a login with your account. So I'm just going to log in with my Google account. Now, if you have a brand new account, then you might need to create a new organization. I already have organizations, so I'm just going to choose this one. Then you need to create a new project. So my project name will be Marn App. and you don't need to add any member and then create project so build a database i'm gonna choose free now you can choose the cloud provider and region but i'm gonna leave them as they are so let's create server okay so now we need to create a new user password Let's create user and let's scroll down. You have to put an IP address. I'm going to click on add my current IP address and let's finish and close. And let's go to database. All right. So now let's click on connect, uh, connect your application and we need to grab, uh, grab this connection string. And we need to create another file .env and let's paste that and let's create a variable mongo um, let me see what was the variable name uh, yeah mongo URI I'm gonna copy this and I'll paste it here and we need to change the password don't worry, I'm going to delete the database anyway. Now let's just create, actually let's just close and go to browse collections. We need to create a default database that we can connect. And add my own data. Database name will be todos. Collection name will also be todos. Let's create. Okay, so we have a database and also a collection. So we need to add our database name, so which will be to do's. So let's just close this file. And now that we have set up uh, MongoDB, let's test it out. So npm run dev to run our dev server. All right, server is running on 8000. And we have a MongoDB connection error and that was expected. I don't know why. Um, if you add current IP address, it doesn't work. You need to change that here. So go to network access, edit, allow access from anywhere, confirm. Okay, so let's just close the server and run the script again, npm run dev. Okay, so server is running on 8000, DB is also connected. So let's just go to localhost 8000. 
we have a simple route called hello and it says hello from kill scoring that means our route is also working and let's just go to get all to do's route and it gives you an empty array because we haven't created any kind of to do's so the dev script is working so let's close and let's test other script so npm sorry npm run build all right so our code is now built so we have another directory called dist and we have the same directory structure so if i go to index.js you can see that this is our compiled code okay so that's the code our production server will use and also you can run the server npm start and if i refresh you can see we don't have any errors the routes are working fine so all the scripts are working fine except the both dev script because we need to set up our front-end application so let's just do that now let's go one directory back let's go to client now like i've told you that i'm going to use next.js so let's just grab the command from my blog so i'm just gonna copy this and let's create the application uh, we don't want to use tab script uh, yeah we want to use eslint all right so our front-end application is created and also it has created a git repository which we don't want for now we want to create a git repository at the root of our project not inside the client so i'm just going to remove that okay so now it is removed now we need to install some packages i'm just going to grab the command so let's scroll down now i'm also going to install a ui framework called chakra ui it is really good you don't need to use chakra ui i'm going to use it so that i don't have to style the elements manually you can use it if you want if you want to learn about chakra ui i have an entire crash course about it you can check that out the link will be on the blog and i will also put that in the description so i'm just gonna grab this command basically these are the packages are going to be needed for chakra ui if you are not using just delete them however we are going to use axios as our data fetching tool you can also use fetch api if you want then you won't have to install any package okay so i'm going to use them so let's install all right so our packages are now installed now we need to create another file so touch dot env dot local so let's open up the front end application on our editor so let's go to env local file and now we need to add an environment variable so this one next public api url this will be the url for our backend server so it should be just http localhost 8000 so that's it and let's close this file now let's just go to underscore app.js and i'm just gonna delete everything and let's just go to the blog let's copy this and paste now this is only needed if you are using chakra ui if you are not using chakra ui you don't need to do that so basically we are importing chakra provider from chakra ui and we are wrapping our entire component by the chakra provider component it will allow us to use chakra ui on our components so let's just save and open up the index.js file and let's remove everything and again let's just copy and paste so we have imported some components from chakra ui imported axios and some hooks from react then we have created our new instance with the backend url and then we have created some state for storing all the to do's input value and refreshing the state this get to do's function will just get all of the to do's for us then we have a function for deleting the to do adding a new to do then we have some uh, heading and a form where we will have an input element and a button to add a new to do and here we are just rendering all the to do's so very simple stuff so let's run our dip servers 
you can just simply run the client server npm run dev but i have added a script on our backend package.json file remember with concurrently we're going to use that so let's just go to our backend uh, directory sorry it will be server and we have a both dev script which will run both of our dev server so let's see if it will work or not so npm run both dev and it has started our backend server okay db is connected and also our next year server is running so let's just go to localhost 3000 so this is the ui we have it is very simple so let's add a new to do then sleep eat doesn't matter what value you put so let's just delete okay so you can see after clicking on delete it is automatically refreshing the data so our application is working fine now it is time to deploy our application so i'm just gonna kill the server now let's set up git so i will go one directory back and let's initialize git repository git init we need to add a git ignore file to our server directory so cd server and let's just create a file dot git ignore now there is a entire repository for git ignore files for different file types so i'm just gonna put the uh, link on the description this is for node so i'm just gonna copy this and i will paste them here okay so let's just quit and now we need to commit our files so git add dash capital a and if i show you the git status all of the files are added excluding node modules directory so let's just commit git commit dash m final code okay so now we need to set up a git repository on github so let's just create a new repo repo name will be mern setup and uh, let's create a repository now i have ssh set up but if you haven't you can use https but i'm gonna use ssh so we need to grab this command first we are adding a remote link then we will push our code to the repository all right so if i refresh you can see we have our final code now it is time to deploy our application first we're going to deploy our backend server to render.com so just go to render.com and after you have logged in just go to the dashboard you will have a bunch of options we need to choose new web service i have logged in with my github account so you might need to connect render with github after you have done that then just go to configure account then go to configure and you need to give your password and now let's scroll down you can give repository access to all of your repositories but i'm gonna choose only select repositories so i'm just gonna search for my repo that i want to use this one so let's just save okay so now i have my repository so connect now we need to give a web service name i'm gonna call it mernapp region i'm not gonna change branch will be main root directory will be dot slash server and the environment node the build command will not just be yarn it will be first npm install because we want to install our dependencies first then we're gonna run npm run build and for the start command it will be npm start and uh, our plan type will be free then go to advanced we need to add environment variable 
so let's just copy this variable name and the value will be this connection string now you would want to use a different connection string for production but that's fine for me and you can also put a health check path I'm gonna put slash hello then auto deploy yes okay everything is fine so let's create web service all right so render is now building our application so let's just wait and hopefully there will be no error all right so you can see that build successful and server is running on 10,000 db is connected so we can just test our api so let's scroll up and here is the link so let's go to this link Oh, sorry, there is no root route. We have to go to slash hello. And as you can see, it says hello from kills coding. And if I just go to get all to do's. And you can see we have only one to do. So now let's just finally deploy our front end to Vercel. So this is the Vercel dashboard. So add new. Uh, we want to add a project so connect with github I've already connected with github so just search for the repository so learn app and no results found so let's configure github app and again we have to give access to Vercel. so learn app Sorry, it will be merge setup. So let's scroll down and save. And it should not be merge app, it should be merge setup. So let's just import. Okay, so let's choose the framework preset. It should be Next.js. Then root directory, we have to change it to client then we don't need to change uh, build output settings we have to add an environment variable the environment variable name will be next public api url and the value will be let's scroll up the value will be this url let's add okay so now we can deploy Okay, so deployment has been started. Hopefully there will be no error. All right, so our project has been deployed. So let's click on this. Okay, so here is the application. We have that existing to do eat. So let's add a new to do. You can see it is auto updating the to do's. Let's try to delete. Okay, so our application is working fine. So that's it. This is how you can set up a full stack application and deploy it to render and for sale. If you have learned something new today, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me a lot. If you have any question, please do let me know in the comment section. I would love to answer them. If you have any kind of feedback or if you want to suggest me any kind of topic, please do let me know in the comment section. You can also follow me on LinkedIn or Twitter as Taronjohn. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.